Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's another fine day here in Kisumu. I'm actually waiting for the earthquake from the Amani Center. Let me know where the earthquake will find you from, the county or the county. Now, there is something which is happening. And I'm not sure whether you've also observed it. And in case you have observed it, let me know. I've observed that for the past few weeks, William Samai Ruto has not gone to the larger Mount Kenya region. He's not campaigned there. And if you've been following the politics of the deputy president for a long time, Mount Kenya region was the place where he spent most of his time. Actually, almost three quarters of William Ruto's time, campaign time, was spent in the larger Mount Kenya region. Why is the deputy president avoiding Mount Kenya region as we speak? In this video today, I want to reveal to you the main reasons why William Ruto is no longer visiting the larger Mount Kenya region the way he used to do before. And I was reading uh, the daily newspaper today, a story there, and they are saying that majority of uh, leaders Tanga Tanga leaders from the larger Mount Kenya region are not willing to host William Samoy Ruto because Ruto makes a lot of promises on the roadside and then is not keeping those promises and therefore they are carrying that burden. And about two weeks ago, the jungle, the thicker town member of parliament, was reported to have quietly quietly left UDA party and William Ruto's Tanga Tanga movement because of debts. When he showed interest because he was elected on independent candidate, as an independent candidate, and then he wants to run for the gubernatorial seat and UDA became more attractive because of his, his popularity. So this guy went to UDA and the event was elaborate. And at each and every stop where he went, the deputy president made promises which were never fulfilled. And of course, it's all over the country. But why is the deputy president not going to the larger Mount Kenya region? Because let's face it, William Ruto, original plan was very simple before they fell out with Uru Kenyatta. It was very simple. He was assured of the larger Mount Kenya region votes, and then he was going to add, to raid, for that matter, Raila Odinga stronghold like Coast and Western Kenya, and then he was, then with the support of the deep state, he was assured of the presidency. William Ruto believed strongly that without Uru Kenyatta, there are regions he was going to make inroads. And of course, it could be true. Places like um, Coast and under the Western Kenya, the former Western Kenya province. But William Ruto, despite all those, always focused his campaigns in the larger Mount Kenya region. He's no longer there. This week, I've not seen the deputy president in uh, the larger Mount Kenya. Last week, I didn't see him in the larger Mount Kenya. What's really happening? Before we get into all those details, if you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue to thank you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is today. Now, let us get back to business. And I want to be very brief. I'm actually doing this video before heading to church, but it will be posted. You'll receive it later in the day. Now, why is the deputy president avoiding the larger Mount Kenya region? Without Mount Kenya region, William Ruto's bid for the presidency is null and void. That's the honest fa fact. He must get at least 80% of those votes. And the other thing you can't ignore is the fact that Mount Kenya region will not produce a presidential candidate. And you should also not ignore Uhuru Kenyatta's factor. But why is the deputy president all of a sudden deciding not to, to not to tour the region? In my view, I have only five reasons. The first reason, I think the unfulfilled promises, the roadside declarations, where he goes to a marketplace, announces that he's donating this much, this much, this much, 
then those donations either they are messed up along the way because maybe the deputy president gives the money because he can't give those money directly he gives the money to someone some of his trusted allies then these allies don't deliver the money so those unfulfilled promises is the main reason why he no longer got there because if for example the deputy president goes to a constituency let's say nyeri town nyeri town member of parliament is Mbogo Ngojiri, who is not a member of the UDA. So definitely William Ruto will look for an opponent there. Let's say Karogo, Tuku, or someone like that. He will look for that opponent, walk around the constituency with that opponent. He will promise Boda Boda guys this much. He will promise women this much. And he will promise a school or a church this much. Then if that money is not delivered, the burden remains on the guy who accompanied him. And that's why people have been asking, why is Alice Wahome and Nindi Nyoro, who are very close allies of the deputy president, are no longer hosting the deputy president in their constituencies? Why is Idungu Kangata no longer hosting William Ruto in his own county? Because Idungu Kangata wants to run for the gubernatorial race there. The other day he met with the aspirants and Idungu Kangata was actually shocked that there were very few aspirants who had expressed interest in UDA party, despite the fact that the party is the most popular party. So the fact of the matter is that if, for example, you invited the DP and they promised 5 million, he didn't give that 5 million. You say, it's okay, let me sort it out. Next time you invite him again, he promise, make the same promise, not delivered. What will happen next is that you will not attempt to invite him again. That's why someone like Jangon what Jungle Hub has now decided for him, he's just going to campaign. He's forgetting about William Ruto and he's forgetting about the UDA. And that's the same same thing is not only in, in the larger Mount Kenya, it's across. So leaders are not willing now to invite the DP. What used to happen before is that most leaders would invite him. That's exactly why the Kaloleni member of parliament from the coastal region decided to go back to ODM party. This guy invited the DP. A lot of promises were made. Those promises were never met. So the residents there are on his neck. So he decided, for me, let me go back to where I was. <laughs> Very comfortable. Just selling my policies, doing whatever I can without these unfulfilled promises. Number two, why is no longer going there the way he used to do? is the Railu Dinga and Azimio factor in the larger Mount Kenya region. The truth of the matter is that Railu Dinga was not a factor in the larger Mount Kenya region. The UDA party never thought and imagined that Railu Dinga was going to make an inroad. Today in this country, the latest opinion poll gave William Ruto, I think it was, uh, was it 65% in uh, the larger Mount Kenya region? And then in uh, Railu Dinga, I think received 16%. And then majority are now moving to undecided or to Azimio. You know, that must worry William Ruto. How is he going to deal with Azimio? And Rela Factor. Rela Factor means now some of the people who are previously in with him or who are willing to sponsor his events in those regions are now reluctant. Like if you are not a politician, you are just a businessman, and you thought that Ruto was going to be the next president, and from what you are witnessing is that those chances are reducing, then it means if you used to invite him there, then you will no longer do that. If you, sponsor, if you used to sponsor someone to, to do that, you will no longer do that. So the Azimio factor is also affecting William Ruto's forays into the larger Mount Kenya region. Number three, and this is something which I said, the emergence of alternative parties. Moses Kure has his own party, which is attracting a lot of people to it. Mori Kijuri has his party, as much as not attracting his people, but it's an alternative party. Kabogo has his own party, which is also attracting a lot of people to it. So the emergence of these alternative parties is confusing the deputy president. Why? Because... Previously, UDA was the dominant party. People like Moses Fukuria came and they said for us, we are willing to work with you, but through a coalition. But William Ruto is keen on UDA. 
So assuming he wants to go to Gatundu South, where Moses Kura is the member of parliament, and this party is probably popular there, then definitely William Ruto will not go back to, to Gatundu. He will try and figure out how he's going to negotiate with Moses Kuria. Remember, he had said he's not going to work with these people. So one of the biggest mistakes William Ruto is committing is refusing to form an alliance with some of these like minds. He must begin, as a matter of urgency, building alliances with people like Moses Kuria. Ignoring them would mean he will still face the same, same challenges. Number four, why he's not going there? I think the deputy president has intelligence that probably President Ru Kenyatta will soon hit the ground running. Or maybe the president is going to support Red Odinga. So he must monitor. So the deputy president is still monitoring President Uru Muge Kenyatta. The moves, the next move the president is going to make. How is he going to approach the larger Mount Kenya region? Is he going to spill bills on me? And if he's going to spill bills on me, how am I going to react? What are his strategies of campaigning for Raila Molo Dinga in the region? So before he can go and embark on a serious campaign there, he must wait for President Ru Kenyatta's strategies so that once those strategies are revealed to him, then he can devise a counter strategies to deal with the President Ru Kenyatta factor in the larger Mount Kenya region. The fifth, which actually should have been the number one, is the nomination headache for the DP in the larger Mount Kenya region. The fact of the matter is that most political parties which are popular normally face serious nomination headache. And this headache are normally caused by cartels within those formations. I always give the case of uh, Alice Wahome and Ndindi Nyoro. You know, these guys have stood with the deputy president very strongly. Probably because always 85% of members of parliament don't go back. Assuming one of them will be going home or is not popular on the ground, but popular at the national level. Then the deputy president party, UDA, has a stronger candidate in that constituency. Yes, Alice Wahome, a strong opponent down there. How will the deputy president maneuver until Alice Wahome that for this is this? He has been trying to persuade, like when uh, Anwai Guru made a comeback, he tried to persuade uh, Piruti Ngrishi to move to their constituency, but Ngrishi refused. These other ones might also refuse. So the fact and the truth of the matter is that the nomination headache is actually eating William Rutos up. And I've always maintained it's not only William Ruto. Even Ray Ludinga is facing serious nomination headache in his backyard. How is he going to manage the nomination where his allies are facing serious threats from opponents? These guys are saying, we stood with you. UDA is where he is. It is because of us. So we are not willing to go through that rigorous campaigns just for the nominations. Reserve the nominations for us. So it means if the DP being a, a politician and also being a human being, he will agree, even me I agree, someone like Ndindi Nyoro and Iswahome have stuck their necks out for the DP. So the best thing for him is just to give them direct ticket, which means he will not be going to their grounds. And lastly, I think the DP also realized that as much as he was concentrating on uh, the larger Mount Kenya region, he needed to go to other regions, especially his backyard. We saw him in Eldoret, Momet. The deputy president was in Wasindishu. The other day he was in, Pok in West Pokot. He will be in uh, Narok and maybe Kajiado. So he must also consolidate his backyard. Because going to war, you need a strong army. Army fully behind you. So if there is no need of the DP going to, for example, to the larger Mount Kenya region where Uhuru Kenyatta is doing everything, yet he's losing also his background. So he must go back his background. He must go back to the battlegrounds where the chances are 50-50. I don't know what you think. But let me hear your thoughts. If you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two. Click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. And by the way, if someone here is keen, I want you to list for me because I'm heading to church. When Once I come back, I'll be reading the comments. I want to know the people who are attending 
the earthquake event at Bomas of Kenya. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye bye.